Sasha is on the line right now. Good afternoon, Sasha. Oh, hi, Leanne. How are you? Hey, thanks so much for coming on the program. Um, yeah, I've just been talking a little bit about Olivia Newton-John because um, a sad day for the country yesterday. I suppose people are talking about that a lot. Yeah, it was. it's really heartbreaking. Um, uh, yeah, a friend had worked with her and she's, um, she's, she really is a beautiful um, lady. And we, and my partner and I were yesterday were watching um, Richard, Richard Wilkins um, tear up about it. So, yeah, mm. it's... Um, yeah, she's such a beautiful lady. It's 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 quite heartbreaking um, here in Australia for sure. Mm, and and the I fact think globally, that, of course. Yeah. Well, that's right because she was a she was a superstar, and but but she was she was a lovely person along with it, like completely lovable and and super talented. So yeah, one of Australia's great exports. But let's talk about something a little bit happier, which is a stitch in time. A totally heartwarming story, this. And I wonder how, how it all came about. Take us back to the beginning, Sasha, when you were looking at making this. Yeah, so I was... Um, I, I saw Driving Miss Daisy when I was 19. I was inspired um, by that. And um, I had... I was actually working on another screenplay. My partner and I flew to... Um, uh, my my friend was cutting one of uh, Jean Imo's films, The Great Wall, um, in Beijing, and we flew over there just to visit him. Um, and we watched a couple of uh, uh, Jean Imo's films, one called Coming Home, which just had this wonderful sense of community. And it reminded me of this idea I got inspired by drive, um, Driving Miss Daisy. So, um, yeah, I sort of flew back and we started working on that. And it, the, the, the whole project was... Um, pretty much um deciding oh let, let's just make a film um and, and so it was a very it was rather than writing a screenplay and then try to get funding and this sort of thing it was more uh, a group of very talented filmmakers and you know a mix of masters and apprentices coming together um just with the the yeah the indi- the idea of of of, of exploring this idea of what does it mean to make it and, and, and what is life all about and just sort of, yeah, and, and, and sort of wrap, wrap these ideas up in this beautiful story. Mm. And, uh, and the story itself, just a brief, a brief rundown, is, is essentially you've got uh, this, this young fashion designer and she, um, sorry, he befriends the, the former dressmaker who is the brilliant Maggie Blinko and she's, she's 88. She's astonishing, isn't she? Uh, how, how yeah. Was, was she just the, the first person that you thought of in casting for this? Um, no, finally, because writing the screenplay, I, I, was, I sort of always imagined Maggie Smith and just to kind of rule that out, we, like, I, I, I just sent it to, her, to Maggie Smith's agent and um, surprisingly, it was it was um, um, the her agent liked it, and and because I called up, I just wanted a quick no, basically, and um, <laughs> a and quick no, said, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just quick no, move on, you know, just you know, start with the dream cast, basically, and um, it was she was away on holidays, and it was sitting on a dresser, and then Don McAlpine and I were talking about it, and we realised that. Um, if we just put everything on hold to see if a particular actress is going to come on board or not, this whole thing's going to fall apart. So um, uh, we went with um, yeah Maggie Blinker. Um, not and and I think I think there's something more special um, with um, with Maggie Blinker, uh, and that is that um, you know she herself is. I mean, in a sense, it's about blossoming in, in later years, and this is her first starring role. And so there was, there was something kind of more beautiful about going in, in that direction. Um, yes. So, yeah. Yeah, I hear so you. We, yeah. And so it's it's so it takes these little little twists and turns, and then so she, uh, you know, and then she um, uh, she gets uh, well. Well, of course you've got let, okay. Let's talk about Glenn Shorrock. I'm I'm recovering from COVID. I still have foggy brain. My apologies. So <laughs> he's the front man, of course, of Little River Band, and they were hugely popular in this country. So many people will know Glenn. So Glenn is playing. He's a singer, and he's lost his job, and he's not he's not having a great time, is he? Is he? So how does how does Maggie come in to the scene? So, um, so Maggie plays Glenn's partner, and um, 
he he's he's sort of he plays a failed musician. So it, it was a little bit like, well, how would how would someone like Glenn be if he he didn't make it uh, and he's still struggling to to mm. find his audience? Mm-hmm. Um, so he loses his his. Uh, job at the beginning of the film um, and Maggie in in sort of a desperate attempt to try and make the circumstance better comes up with this idea that she'll uh, make clothes again and, and bring in that extra money and he can concentrate on his album um, basically so um, except the uh, the sound of a the sound of a, um, a rattling old sewing machine doesn't work well with uh, music creation, so you know yeah. tensions brew within the household. <laughs> I can imagine. Actually, that takes yeah. me takes me back to my childhood because my mum was an avid sewer, and they are rattly old things, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. There's it's, something um, quite something quite magical about seeing someone at a mach- at a machine because it's it seems such an old fashioned uh, image these days. Unfortunately, I'm I'm really surprised that. Uh, so many people have said to me, "This is my story," and for very different reasons. Um, yeah, it's it's really surprising, and 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 people have said, "Oh, my mum used to sew, or my partner sews, or I sew, or or um, or I'm a musician." Like in different ways, um, people have, are really identifying with the story, and we, it, yeah, it just seems to have this sort of quite sort of wide appeal. Um, for some reason, yeah, and and bringing and a bit of nostalgia thrown in, which is also something people I think are looking for these days. Yeah, I think. Um, uh, yeah, I think I, I I always I do like that mix of um, you know laughter and tears and 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 you know um, and yeah, looking back, but also taking that forward. Yeah, so I I think. Um, there's, I, I guess um, uh, my films just try and in, encapsulate the sort of full spectrum of emotion. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I've, I've sort of finding people coming out saying I'm laughing and crying and like, yeah, what are you doing with our emotions? And <laughs> yeah. but to me, film, films are emotion. And, um, and I think that even even in difficult circumstances, you laugh, and even when things are, are wonderful, um, there's there's often a bit of sadness there because um, that's mm. the human experience. Yeah, that's right. Well, it well it is. Life's like that, you know, twists and turns, and and that's what the theatre's about, and or you know, movies are about is taking you on a on a journey. Uh, but it but it has so many people say it took them by surprise. Like they say, the movie uh, they went in. Uh, thinking they get something out of it, but it um, but it really affected them. That must be so gratifying for you. Yeah, um, yeah, it it is. We we Don at, at um, Don and I, Don McAlpine and I, were chatting at one point, and 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 initially when we said, "Oh, let's make a, a movie," we the what 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 made this particular project sort of special is that I think when Grandma starts getting active and doing things, it, it's quite. Mm. It's quite inspiring for a family. So, I, so the idea was, if we if we inspire all the in grandmothers, we inspire the world. And I, and I think, um, the, you know, there, there's a lot of things to be done, you know, in, in the world, and and a lot, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot, um, um, yeah, there's a lot to be done. There's a lot of community be community to be nurtured, and um, mm. yeah, we're just hoping that that it can be like this sort of you know, positive little seed um, for yes. humanity in, in, in a way, yeah. I hear you because I think we live in a very ageist world uh, these days and generally movies that have elderly people in them are, are kind of a bit twee, aren't they? And they're like, oh, they're at the rest time. Aren't they having a lovely time? But it's there's nothing empowering about their lives. But this sounds empowering for an older person to show you can turn it around. You can follow a different path. Do it. I think I think so. I mean, for me, I mean, I've got a lot of older friends like Maggie, um, Don McAlpine, um, Michael Kirby, the High Court judge here in Australia, and all these guys are just active and doing things. And and I think if there's breath flowing through your lungs, you know, um, get involved and and um, participate in something. Mm. Um, I think there's real, I think there's really real joy to be had um, to find. 
a way to participate in life. Um, and yeah, there's a, there's a yeah. I think you'd be surprised. And I think when when a community is all inclusive of of the very young, of the very old, and everybody mm. in between, there's something uh, more powerful about that. And um, it even even if you're in a so-called privileged young position of something there's it's it's still comforting to know that you know you're in a society that's all inclusive Mm. um because you you won't no matter who you are you're not always going to be in that position as well so um yeah i think it's um i think the big thing about it's just that sense of community and i and that's what we're really excited about to bring it to new zealand because Mm. I think the the New Zealand culture is so much different to Australia um, and it just seems that there's a sense of community that's a lot stronger in New Zealand and this sort of underlying sense of kindness and um, um, yeah, Maggie and I are really excited to be bringing it it there and touring it around. Mm. When when are you due here, Sasha? Oh, we're going to be there actually next week. Um, We've got our um, we've got our uh, New Zealand premiere on Thursday, the 18th of August at, at um, cinema at the Rialto Cinema in Newmarket. Right. Um, and, and I've insisted that a certain number of tickets are just open to the public, so anyone can actually come along to that. Um, and then we, um, then we go. Yeah, then we sort of travel down. Sort of. Um, yeah, uh, that's the short. Do you want me to tell you where we're? Yeah, going, pl- well, go for it. We've got plenty of time. <laughs> please do. Oh, okay. Yeah, please do because we're <laughs> yeah, a national so we, show. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we're going to to Bridgeway on the nineteenth and Rialto, um, Taranga. Um, there's uh, we'll be um, we're hoping to lock something in and have look around. Um, have lock north on that Monday the twenty second. Uh-huh. Um, We'll be in we'll be in Wellington. We've got a um, uh, on the twenty August the twenty fourth um, at the lighthouse. Um, we're doing a morning tea um, at ten forty five at lighthouse uh, Patone. Um, then we're going to um, Nelson to the State Cinema um, that evening on the Wednesday the twenty fourth. Um, off to Christchurch. Uh-huh. On um, the, the Luminaire on the evening of August Thursday, August twenty fifth. Um, then we're going to Shoreline Cinema um, in White Waikani, I think it's. Is it Waikani? Uh huh. Near yeah, Wellington. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yes, that's it. You're doing well. <laughs> um, Friday the twenty sixth at midday, and then we're up at. Um, um, we're at, um, fielding Focal Point Cinema at five thirty. Right. Um, on that Friday as well. Um, then we're going to back to up to um, to uh, um, Auckland um, and then off to uh, Waitanga, um, the, the uh, Mercury Twin Cinema there on yes. their Sunday, the August 28th. Right. And then, and then Maggie's flying out on the Monday, the 29th. But in between all of that, we're doing sort of a big tour and we're getting, you know, we, we just going to have a good... Look, me, me, hoping to meet a lot of um, a lot of New Zealanders and see a lot of um, the country. And Maggie's super excited about that, as, as am I. Mm. Um, once Maggie flies, I'm going to fly down to the South Island um, and um, and just visit some of the cinemas there that we're still sort of locking the dates in. Right. Um, for, do for you that. do you know Sasha if you're coming to Arrowtown, a little town um, near Queenstown? Oh yeah, we are. We're going to Queens. T- uh, yes, so um, we've we've booked in at Ruby's and I think another cinema there. So that the, yes, that, yes, so that's, that's Wanaka. Pi- yes, yeah. So I'm expecting on the, um, uh, at the currently I think I'll be there on Tuesday, the 31st of August. So right, um, hoping to lock something in. Um, Glenn. Glenn Shorrock will be in town at the same time. I'm hoping to convince him to come along. Fantastic. Um, unfortunately, his he, he's, he's 102-year-old mother just passed away. Um, mm. So um, he's in Adelaide um, uh, dealing um, with that. Mm. Um, but yeah, we're, we're hoping we're hoping that Glenn might join us um, for a Q and A. Um, yeah, in Queenstown. So he'll be. He's sort of. He's. He's. Uh, 
Uh, they're going there for skiing and um, at sort of at the same time. So, good, good. Um, yeah, we'll, 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 both, we'll both be in Queenstown around that time. So, yeah. That, that's, um, that's fantastic. I will get back to you. Well, I hope it's a day like today because it is just splendid. The mountains are white. They are covered in snow. It's a, be- oh, wow. it's a beautiful day. It's like cloudless and sunny. Oh, we had a very cold morning, so bring, bring some warm clothes. <laughs> we were minus, minus nine, and uh, the pipes, the water pipes at my house froze this morning, so there you go. But, yeah, um, right. Maggie's you know, been asking me about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So bring, bring um, warm clothes. But having said that, August is a beautiful month because you start to get spring, so I think uh, you'll really love it. And, and and you, you're so welcome, you know, uh, this this is just wonderful. And, you know, it's very sad about Glenn, isn't it, his mother, to get to such a great age, 102. That's incredible. Yeah, he's just, Glenn's just such a beautiful and compassionate person. Um, like, um, you know, at that age, it's, it's, it can, I guess in some respects, you can say it's not surprising, but um, no one really prepares you, I think, for when someone passes away. And I know he... Mm. Um, he he's he took his mum to see the film um, um, earlier in the year, so it's really wonderful that she got to see his performance. Um, but yeah, he's such a compassionate and lovely person. I I, I think it will be hitting him quite hard. But um, mm. hopefully hopefully he'll be um, he'll be able to join us in Queenstown. But I will certainly be there. Mm. I hope so too. And you know the 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 portrayal, his portrayal of Duncan, it's it's he, he's he's getting a lot of praise for this um people are say, saying that he's just outstanding and isn't that incredible because this is his actual first film role yeah um in in some respects he's um yeah he he he, he can't he, he can't fake it in a, in a way like he's a he's a he's a natural um he's a natural performer and he he wasn't technical at all with his performance he he just sort of had to really try and understand that character and then sort of get into it. So yeah, he was he was really quite um, he was really wonderful and just a really wonderful person to to work with. Mm. But he 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 does play a, a very unsavoury uh, <laughs> character, yeah. Yeah. and it's not like him at all. Yeah, um, which would have been reason, quite hard reason, for him. Yeah, yeah, it was the magic of his singing that um, that that we wanted. We need to you know really. Yeah, it's just show someone who's got that sort of magic in their in their voice, and um, uh, and then I thought we can we'll, we'll work on the other. I was quite sort of confident we could, you know, um, get in there with the other uh, with the sort of unsavoury character part. That yeah, he was just really wonderful, like amazing. He's he's really is amazing. Um, when David Stratton, who's sort of Australia's number one critic, um, mm. looked at the film. Bruce Beresford, who directed Driving Miss Daisy, told him, told um, David to have a look at it. So he didn't know really who was in it at all and was quite mm. surprised to see Glenn Shorrock's name at the end of it. Yeah, I suppose for you that was a little bit of a risk, but it sounds like that he delivered in spades and he totally exceeded your expectations. Um, or I, was it not I a risk? <laughs> um, I I never saw it as no. I never saw it as a risk. I was just I was just happy I had that magic of the singing. Where um, had we gone with that actor and tried to get them to sing, uh, that may have been more difficult. But but I really I really wanted that magic and the, and the I was quite it. He was the thing about Glenn is he just won't let you down. Um, and and that's all all I need is just just turn up and give me your all and, and right. we'll figure it out. Right. I was never I was never concerned and um, Don McAlpine was never concerned. Glenn himself was. Um, he really um, he he really didn't he really didn't want to let us down. But we were seeing it, it, with each setup. You know, we were seeing that we were getting it. Um, um, yeah. So we we. Yeah, I, I I wasn't, and we have we've just put sort of certain space around the time if we, if there was anything particularly challenging for him to do, um, but yeah, it was a particularly challenging role. But for some strange reason, I was never I was never worried. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, well, I suppose yeah. if from what you say about the guy, he just sounds like a delight and and a real person. And I guess I I totally get what you mean about the authenticity of the singing because. That's what he is, and if you had an actor 
who really couldn't portray what it's like to be a singer, it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, it just sells it sells that character. This is someone who sounds amazing, and yet he's no one knows who he is, and that's the that's the pain. Um, and without that magic there in that voice at the beginning, um, we don't we can't sell that character. So that mm. that was really the key the key for for mm. Glenn. It's funny because um, the descriptions of Duncan are like, you know, egotistical narcissism. You know, he's a narcissist. He treats uh, her, uh, Lieber, with contempt and he always puts her down and he's cold-hearted, he's self-centred. And then, of course, I won't give it away, but at, at the end, he has a realisation. Yeah, 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 it, yeah. It's a, it's, um, and that realisation was the reason why so many amazing people came on board to make that film was that, you know, what's it all about? What does making it really mean? That message. Um, mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's funny though, because Glenn wasn't, Glenn wasn't our first choice. Um, I had originally, I originally wrote the script thinking of Jack Thompson. Right. And um, he was, he was, um, he was, he was, because I thought his voice would sound great. You could get him singing. But he wasn't, he wasn't available because he was working on something else. And it was actually Maggie who said, why don't you try Glenn Shurek? Because I hadn't actually thought of him at the time. So I hung up the phone call. I Googled Glenn just to see how he, how he is now um, and to see what he's... And I saw this performance of him on stage and he was seeing Cool Change. And within 10 minutes, he had me in tears. And before the song ended, um, I found his number and was uh, calling his, um, really? his manager. So... Yeah, and very quickly he came on board. Um, yeah, it was uh, a sort of um, meant to be, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it, it certainly was a remarkable um, un unfolding, I guess. Of, it was yeah. fate. It was meant to be. Yeah, I think the ground appeared at our feet a few times with this, this project. Um, but it's just got such tremendous goodwill and, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it's, we're very, 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 very proud of it. Yeah. I, I really, I think you should be super proud, uh, your your debut, and the content is different, and it seems very different to, well, to a lot of movies, and uh, also, like I said at the start, you know, casting Maggie, who's who's 88, and, and basing it all around a new direction for her, and... Yeah, really, congratulations. It, it's, uh, it sounds very special, and I, th I think it'll be really popular in New Zealand, and I think it's kind of right timing as well, do you, in terms of uh, maybe not possibly the pandemic, but also perhaps um, appreciating uh, the elderly, their wisdom, their talents, you know? Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah, I think, I mean... I mean, the reality is Maggie is 88 and she's about to jump on a plane with me and we're going to do a road trip together. I mean, it's, it's kind of, I, I mean, the, we, we've done a couple of Q&As and, um, and the audience is just gasped. You can just almost hear them gasp when, they, when she says how old, how old she is. Yeah. Um, but the thing, the thing that it really is exciting about this trip for me is that I think the New Zealand film industry just, punches way above its weight and it's been so inspiring for me and I've been, I've been so inspired by so many um, New Zealand films. It's just kind of like in my heart I'm almost coming, you know, it's a sort of like a Mr. Thank you and here's my film, <laughs> like <laughs> a giving back to to a, a country that's, that's um, inspired me basically. Nice. So that's, yeah. And you shot, this was all shot in Sydney, wasn't it? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, um, mostly around sort of the Balmain, Balmain markets, and um, yeah, sort of Balmain, Surrey Hills, mm. and out in the Dural, Dural area. Um, it's sort of a unique look at Sydney, and um, I was surprised when the first couple of screenings that people were coming out talking about the diversity in the film. Yes. I, I did. I mean, I understood that to a, a, a small degree, but, um, I, yeah, I just feel like it. it's it's just Sydney. Like, Sydney is very multicultural, mm -hmm. and um, I guess I'm sort of trying to reflect the 
sort of city we live in as well. Mm. Um, I was I wasn't specifically trying to be diverse. It just sort of it, to me that's the world I live in. Um, so mm. um, that was interesting. But it's, yeah, it's a, it's very sort of we want it to be a, like a fresh, refreshing look at Sydney. Yeah, and it's great that you've got that cross cultural aspect to it as well. Uh, with with is it Hoa? How do you say his name? Um, Hoa. Hua, wow, sorry, someday. apologies. Yeah. yeah, that's dreadful. Hua. So, and the the poster is lovely with him with his arm around Maggie, uh, and it's it is affecting even even just that image. Yeah, yeah. We we were we were challenged. Yeah, we yeah, we really loved that um, that post that sort of cross. Yeah, I guess it is the um, yeah the the, the yeah. It's, you know, um, Asian, European, the intergenerational um, relationship. Mm. Um, yeah, I l- like I said, I, 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 I think in in some. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I fell in love with driving Miss Daisy when I was nineteen, and so this was sort of, um, yeah, just very close to my heart to to tell something like this. Mm. Yeah, mm, I hear you. And, you know, I'm looking at some more reviews and people, uh, what did the Sydney Morning Herald say? Shocked at how good Shorrock is. He is totally and suspiciously credible. <laughs> <Like, laughs> <laughs> Which I think is hilarious, given that he's such a, well, so nasty in his role as Duncan. Yeah, I mean, I think as... I mean, I mean like, we all have this and we all get angry. And so, I mean, there's you can sort of tap into your... I mean, to, you, you can sort of exaggerate feelings and stuff like that so it's I, I, yeah I mean it's not Glenn at all but he you know we we can all sort of lean into darker sides of ourselves I guess um of course we can. and I and I, I I wouldn't say that this is a dark side of Glenn watch out or anything like that but <laughs> yeah. it's just it's just a human it's a human um you know, the human frustration and, and getting, you know, I think we can all kind of identify with with that. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's, it's he's not like that. He's the, he's the most lovely human being on the planet. Mm. Yeah, I, I can't wait uh, to, to see the full. I've only seen, you know, snippets, unfortunately. So really, really looking forward to seeing it. I think we may, Tamar suggested that uh, we may be able to give away some tickets at some point too, which would be terrific when you're, touring New Zealand and when it opens here which would be great uh, I suspect yeah that'd be great I suspect yeah. you you know it'll continue to um, to get uh, win high praise actually and uh, congratulations for you know for, for pulling off this and your and your first feature that's tremendous what, what's the buzz yeah like? what's the buzz like over there are you are you in an endless round of interviews and things like have you had lots of um, media attention um, yeah, so we it, it was it was interesting because it's we were we released a film um, sort of coming out of lockdowns um, in Australia and um, I wanted to uh, it had been suggested that we change the date but I didn't want to because the film was sort of helping bring the older demographic back to the cinema because um, the cinemas themselves were sort of suffering um, it sort of has really taken off in some areas. Um, uh, we've done a bit of a case study on the the sort of the areas and the cinemas where it worked just to sort of allow so we can just um, let the cinemas in New Zealand understand what was working and what wasn't. Um, basically, um, if there's enough word of mouth gets out, it, it it does it just sort of takes off. But if it doesn't reach that critical mass in that area, um, it it, um, you know, it won't do as well. Um, the sure. thing that's universal about it is that um, no matter if there's one person comes in to see it or if the whole session sells out, mm. everyone seems to come out just really pleased, like really excited about the story. So, mm. um, so that's pretty. Um, um, yeah, we had a cinema in 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 L in Perth, the Luna Cinema, that was. Um, um, yeah, they they were not in lockdown, and they were, they did a test screening themselves of it, and there was just such buzz in the room. Um, and uh, Tony Bective at Luna Cinema in Perth was saying that you know you really can judge it by 
whether people sit there for the whole credits and whether they're still sitting there afterwards. And, True, yes. Um, but they, they, they decided to run it at two sites and um, they made $29,000 in, in two sites with this film, which it's not, it's not sort of entirely about the money, but the money does reflect that it, it was a real, um, yeah, it, if it triggers that word of mouth and, and um, then it, it really takes off. So, yeah. Um, what we're what we're doing is just sort of trying to open as wide as possible in New Zealand, so that everyone sort of is aware of it at the same time. Mm, um, yeah. So yeah, good. Yeah. Well, really looking forward to that. And I have to ask you: you did talk about the New Zealand film industry, and you're right; it is, it is an incredibly uh, alive and well. It's yeah, it seems to be doing very well and it has done for a while now I'm, I feel proud of our some of the films that we put out too onto the world stage is there one that stands out in your mind as a favourite from this from this these our, our little islands <laughs> um, you know there was a, the, um, a film that I caught in Australia and it just didn't seem to take off and I was really surprised the Dark Horse was just um, amazing but yeah um, the um, yeah the the Dark Horse, the World Fastest Indian, Lord of the Rings, um, Boy, uh, Hunt for the Wilder People. Mm, um, mm. Uh, yeah, there's there's a there's a there's a lot that um, yeah when it, when a New Zealand film um, comes out, I'm sort of yeah just yeah it, there, there's a lot that it's that I've just really been blown away by. You, um, you relate to those, yeah, and I think I think you're right. That sort of hunt for the world of people. That slightly, it's great that we're getting a bit more humour and not taking ourselves so seriously. Uh, what we do in the yeah. shadows was another one. Uh, Taika Waititi, of course, doing amazing yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's it's, and, and look, it's great. And that world passes Indian. That was again dealing with an older character um, and the young boy. And I mean that. Yeah, again, it's just it's. Uh, it's phenomenal. Like, as I go through these films, it's like, oh, that's my favourite. No, hang on, wait, that's my favourite. No, this is my favourite. <laughs> I mean, it, it's, I think, um, yeah, the, the, yeah. I'm, I'm just excited to bring something there that I, that I, I hope I can, you know, say, look, I can make a great film too. <laughs> Absolutely. Hold yeah. your head up high. And, and so what's, yeah. what's next for you, Sasha? Oh, uh, so um, yeah, I've got. Um, uh, I'm I'm writing a screenplay now. Um, so my partner, he's um, Chinese, and uh -huh. we had a lot of issues with his parents um, coming out, um, just with that sort of multicultural and gay relationship there. That um, right. is quite sort of ridiculous. That I'm working on a screenplay about that, um, and then there's another mm. one just about a, a white young white um, boy and his indigenous friend that, you know, run away together um, to try and race in the nationals in the city. Nice. Um, and and that's, that one, yeah, I'm really, I'm quite excited about both of those those projects. So, um, yeah, just uh, seeing which one gets some traction. Um, that's right. With it. And, yeah. you know, obviously very personal issues and pertinent to you. And and that's often where the best work comes from, isn't it? It's like from your own life and the, some of the, perhaps the issues you've encountered. And, yeah, trying to relate that to, to film and play. Fantastic. I mean, good luck to you. And honestly, uh, well done. And uh, we hope that you thoroughly enjoy your visit across the ditch. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Uh, all thanks, the best. Thanks, man. Thank you so yeah, much for I, talking. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you in Queenstown. Yeah, that will be terrific. Can't wait. We'll, we'll uh, <laughs> turn on the sun. <laughs> right. Lovely. Thank you, Thank you so Thank much. You. Sasha Hayden from Australia, filmmaker, and he's just released his first uh, full-length feature, which is called A Stitch in Time, starring Maggie Blinko. Glenn Shorrock from the Little River Band is in it as well.